Hello. <clears throat> Welcome to The Secret History. Living in your aquarium. How's it going, guys? How are we doing tonight? Uh, I know that, uh, you know, I haven't been... Haven't been too regular. Haven't been uh, having my Metamucil in my uh, fish vlog diet. Uh, you know, times are tough. Uh, running low on Dr. Pepper, but morel, morel. Thinking about mushrooms because it's mushroom season. Morale is high, and that's also because I'm going to be setting up my 90p soon. Uh, how's it going, everybody? I see folks. Filtering in, Chansky, hey, hey, uh, Chara, hello. Um, see folks filtering in, which is kind of how our subject tonight uh, also does things, is filter feeding somewhat, uh, going through the mud and the dirt and, you know, eating sand and all sorts of junk and detritus and then spitting it out and eating the little particles that uh, no one else wants. It's a pretty uh, sweet gig, actually. You know, um, but that's not the only type of catfish there is. Um, this is a huge, huge, huge topic. And the reason it's on my mind tonight is somebody wanted me to show all my plecos. Okay, so we can try to do that. What we'll do is we'll stir up some food real quick for them. Uh, we'll get some frozen food warmed up, some... Uh, Daphnia and some, uh, you know, di just rotting detritus nastiness. Uh, but what's really got them on my mind, other than people asking to see an array of my plecos uh, on camera, is that the new tank that I'm getting is 18 inches tall, 36 inches wide, over 40 gallons, like 44.6 gallons. That's like 8 billion liters, I think, roughly. Uh, I'm not good at metric. Uh, no, I think it's like, what would that be? Like four, like uh, 240 liters? I don't know. Might be way off. Uh, but in any case, 40, 45, 46 gallon tank. Uh, J-Rad, how's it going, my friend? My Southern California friend. I hope you are not so hot that you is on fire uh please be careful to all you out in california no joke uh ginger hello my dear it's good to see you i actually met ginger when i went to tennessee but as i was speaking um and it's good to see all your little faces your 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 little teeny profile faces uh uh but as i was saying uh i think with the bigger tank, I have catfish, angelfish, discus, just bigger fish. You know, I haven't gone quite to cichlid land yet. Uh, I've got my I've got my blinders on as I do uh, for cichlids. In that, you know, it's just it's a whole other realm. Uh, but I do like dwarf cichlids. I might get demonetized for the that word I just used that means little people. Uh, even when we're talking about creatures with that in their name. So we'll say pygmy cichlids or mini cichlids. Uh, I do really love them. I'd like to get into them, but I just can't in the apartment that we live in. Uh, now I've got three 40-gallon tanks. I guess I could get into some Shelleys or, you know, something. I could be a terrible owner of an Oscar or a Green Terror, you know. Uh, but I'm not going to do that. So... For me, I've found that catfish are a pretty interesting one in that uh, there's so many different personalities in the catfish world. And if you guys have any questions, especially about catfish tonight, let me know. I've had a lot of different pet catfish. Um, I'm more familiar, um, oddly enough, with the weird ones like the banjo catfish or the red-tailed lizard catfish or, um, you know... If you want to call it one it's probably not really one but the reticulated hill stream loach um i'm going to kind of include some loaches into the catfish category they behave very similarly um and uh with loaches some just eat uh algae algae and detritus others actively hunt uh, but we'll, we'll try to stay mostly on catfish now to me in our hobby we have a few groups of main catfish, and that is pleco, 
and specifically Ancestress and Peclatia, uh, and, and then also your rubber lip Pleco. Uh, but the there are a bunch of types of Plecos. I have a video called What the L, where I go over how, why, and when we started naming Plecos L133, L333, whatever. Uh, why that that has gone on and uh, which is which trying to demystify that. But long story short, there are a lot of species within the term pleco, just as there are with Corydoras. So Cory, if you say, hey, I'm getting a Corydora catfish, eh, that doesn't, I mean, we don't know that much by that term. Uh, there are over 829 uh, species and another probably 900 that have been described or are in captivity, but don't have any name. Uh, they've been described, but not formally, uh, and they're on pictures. So I've been thinking about what I want to put in the new tank a lot, and uh, I think I'm getting a filter and all that jazz hopefully tomorrow or the next day, and I can start cycling it. But... Um, you know, I was thinking about getting some uh, African glass catfish. First, I thought about all the cool, like, Cynodonis, uh, the leopard-spotted catfish Cynodonis. Um, you know, there's actually quite a few different types uh, of those catfish, but I'm thinking of the Petricola. Uh, and those are all African catfish. And so I was thinking, okay, what else do we have? in the catfish world. So you kind of have these midwater catfish. So like you're, I mean, they'll still hide at the bottom, but when they are out, like wood cats, um, like Petricola, Cynodonis, the Cynodonis family, um, like uh, Siamese glass catfish, which I don't know if those are true catfish either. And then you've got, you know, the plecos, and there's kind of more of the sucker fish type of pleco catfish and then there's also the midwater hunter eater like the peclatia like the zebra stripe or the leopard frog or the l333 where they um yeah they will still cling on to things and suck and hold on with their mouth to logs and glass and all that but they actually uh hunt a lot of them are omnivores or even carnivores and they will hunt other little fish snails things like that uh, and then you've got, you know, autosynclus and uh, marbled autosynclus, zebra stripe autosynclus, uh, orange autosynclus, uh, which have the Latin name Robocop, which is one of my favorites. I don't know that they are a true autosynclus. I'm not even sure they're a true catfish, but they look like it. They fit the bill. So we're going to include things like that. Brooches, uh, which look like big corridors. They like get like, you know, this big. They're chunky. But they look just like a corridor. And then wood cats, another midwater one. I used to have some ninja, aka orca or killer whale uh, cats, wood cats. They passed away about a year and a half ago, and that really devastated me. I was really sad about that. Um, but, you know, there's also honeycomb, leopard print, uh, all sorts. And then you get into your bigger cats, like your. Uh, kind of predatory uh they have a, a den and they usually come out and attack uh it, like the channel cats and the bluegill cats and uh, or the blue cats and uh you know red tail cats like the ones that get up to like four or five hundred pounds the gooch catfish the ones that we probably shouldn't have in the hobby at home uh they need a lot of water they need a lot of room to roam uh, let's see here. Speaking of catfish, do you know any quarries or, or similar that like harder water? Um, I don't necessarily know quarries that like harder water off the top of my head. I'm sure there's a lot that probably tolerate some of it as long as it's carbonate water and calcium. Uh, the main thing is though, a lot of them come from quarries specifically. They come from the rainforest, which has lots of leaves that fall in, lots of flooding, so lots of leaves and hummus and earthy material that's going to make that water, one, black and, uh, you know, very tannin stained, like tea or coffee, muddy, silty, all that stuff. Uh, 
and it's flowing. So they're getting new and it's oxygenated water. So, or quarries also live like in Colombia, Venezuela, um, uh, Brazil, I suppose, but more so Peru and, and Colombia up in the foothills and streams and rivers. And it's clear water that's really oxygenated. Uh, that's where like pandaloches in China come from a similar thing. Uh, so most of what I know is not particularly hard water. Although I would, you know, venture to say that they can deal with it. There's catfish all over the place where people let plecos go. I mean, there's catfish all over Florida. There's video recently. Uh, uh, when I went down to Florida, I saw tons of plecos in, in that have just decimated their ecosystem down there. But uh, the rubber lip plecos, they'll get like this big, almost two feet. And they'll just take over. But when they spawn, they all come together in Florida in the warm springs that they have there. And uh, there's like 500 to a few thousand of them, of these foot to two foot long uh, plecos that must have been in there for years. And that water is just chock full of limestone uh, carbonate and higher uh, acidity or higher... Uh, uh, less acidity, more uh, basic stuff. So I would say that there are some probably, but I don't know which which ones right off the top of my head. I would check and, and I would guess that a lot of them have, uh, have that ability uh, and can put up with it as long as the water's oxygenated. Um, a lot of catfish uh, also they eat, um, you know, a lot of stuff in the mud and the silt. So they get their head in there, they n nuzzle around, and they really make uh, a mess, and they filter that through their mouth. So unlike a lot of fish that you just have to, like, kind of hold their breath through their gills and cruise through uh, silty areas or hang tight, uh, catfish are meant to be in the muck. They have feelers, they have... Uh, long lateral lines, a lot of species, um, where you can just see that they were born uh, to live in little to no light. And, you know, like, hold on one sec. All right, so to show you guys some examples, uh, you know, catfish, typical catfish, African catfish here. You've got all these barbels, which we'll be seeing. We'll look around. Um, and you've got that strong lateral line. That's what that thing is on most fish. That dotted line or that crease. It's actually a set of glands and organs. Here's a red-tailed catfish like I was talking about. Um, and uh, this is, I think this is just a random catfish search. But you can see they've got those whiskers. There are electric catfish in both Africa and South America. There are what we call ghost knives that look really funky. Uh, let's look up a ghost knife catfish. For those of you who haven't seen a ghost knife, it's just we got to show you a ghost. Uh, well, here's all the glass ones. Where's ghost knife? Oh, that was just ghost. Ghost knife. And you know what I found? Uh while looking through when I was down in Florida at Seagrass. So I've seen these. These are pretty common. Aquatic Arts, which there's a link to in the description, because that's where pretty much all my plecos came from, unless they came from Greg Sage. Uh, there are some really interesting... Uh, some really interesting... These, are, these get larger. They get up to like two feet or a foot long, depending on uh, the species that we're talking about. But they've got this really interesting uh, body design, and it's one of the oldest fish designs that there is in the world. Same with like these knife fish, uh, evolutionarily speaking, even older than the autos, uh, autos, uh, coelacanth. Uh, oh, Alan, thank you so much for the super chat, my friend. I really appreciate it. Oh, and uh, Ginger, ten dollars super chat. Shout out to Ginger, you guys. I should. Um, at some point, when we get a few more subscribers, we should be able to do membership, things like that. Um, I do need a new moderator. I do need some more moderators, I should say. Um, let me catch up with the chat really quick. Um, 
Yeah. Uh, red tail catfish for your 20 gallon. Yeah, don't do that, please. Uh, albino red f tails are really cool, really pretty. Um, wood cats uh, cost a lot. And yes, so what I am thinking, let me show you guys. Uh, while we're on the computer, this feels really cheap. I feel like I need the software to like switch over and be sly. First, I'm going to show you the elephant ghost knife because I'd never heard of it. And uh, I saw it when I was at Seagrass Farms. Uh, and there is, so there's the uh, black ghost knife fish. And then there's the, the freaky fish like this, the... Uh, Oh, what what is this one called? Uh, this is like a this is that's not labeled right. But there's this guy that ha that it, you'll see from time to time at stores that has the the nose like that. Well, there's also another fish that's a ghost knife fish that has the nose like that. And uh, here we go, elephant nose ghost knife fish. And that nose can be flexed all the way down. I've and the one I saw had stripes, uh, like this one here, where you can see stripes along its body, and it moves uh, through a very interesting flowy motion, like a jellyfish almost. And these little sensors right along here, uh, these are its lateral line. And if you look closely, each of those are little dots and they sense the electromagnetic field as well as the pressure of the water, the speed of the water, and, you know, it can detect almost like radar or sonar. If anything's moving in the water, that's all, all catfish have uh, some version of that. Now, almost all fish in general also have some version of that. But I just thought I'd show you guys that really quick uh, because I think that's interesting. Uh, I guess these guys are just called elephant nose elephant fish i don't know i'm a bad fish keeper uh the other thing is they've found out now that most catfish are actually electrically active now that doesn't mean that they're like an electric eel but there are quite a few catfish now that they find uh are able to use an electrical charge to stun their uh, prey or to confuse the hunting signals of other big catfish, of other fish uh, that actually um, are looking for them. So, you know, there might be even their own type. So maybe even their own family, their own parents. Oh, geez. I'll have to do an episode on the mussels and how that biomechanically works. But it's insane. A lot of them, a lot of the most electrically active ones tend to be this black uh, color and they they are very muscular um some of them get very large and there are a few that can really shock the heck out of you here's a red tail catfish these are now loose in the southern florida uh everglades area just north of there um and they get very very large uh the other thing that i was able to see is a uh so a red tail come on red tail uh, catfish so we'll take a look at a few of those again this is how big they are compared to people I mean they're no joke and they sell these at Petco and I just feel like can I get a thumbs up if you guys think they shouldn't sell those for three dollars a piece at Petco when they're two inches long I think it's ridiculous um, fish tropic what's up Noah How's it going? Um, Kevin, hey there. Uh, let's see here. Kevin says, I have a school of nine Corey Schwartzite in my 75. Could I add, say, six or seven of them, uh, orange lasers to go with them? Yes, you could, definitely. Uh, feel free. Almost all Corey Doras are interchangeable. However, some of them will interbreed. And in my opinion, that makes it interesting. Uh, just don't get two that are so similar looking that you might make a hybrid and then you'll sell those or let them into some body of water in South America by chance. I don't know. There's different – people are very uh, opinionated when it comes to uh, if, you know, what rainbow fish or Danios or whatever, if they should be allowed to mix and uh, let alone they, they worry about 
apparently of them getting back into the water. Uh, but, you know, they really, uh, they really, in my opinion, as long as you're not like spreading them across the country, like, uh, Johnny catfish seed, uh, you should be fine, uh, mixing them, especially all those, uh, Corydoras, um, uh, that I've ever had together seem to do really well. Uh, Steph, hello, animal lover number one. Hello, fish fam. Uh, can we get a like spike, guys? There's a lot of y'all crawling in here, swimming in like some catfish. We're doing some noodling. That's that uh, use your hand to catch them. Uh, when I was down in Florida, I also saw some loose stick, uh, which means, uh, you know, not quite albino, but they've got issues with their outside pigment. And... Um, they're just really cool. Some Sometimes they're called platinum if they're really bright white. Uh, but what they've been mixing them with, check this out, are giraffe or shovel nose catfish with the red catfish. So you get these super massive fish. So red tail, shovel, nose catfish hybrid. So these guys... Here's a, here's a, this looks more like a normal shovel tail, okay? Uh, but you can actually see they hybridize, and this is what you get. So these things have crazy sensory organs, big old fins and plumage and marking, and they're able to dig and plow down into the sand and the silt of the banks of rivers, but they're also able to hunt uh, like the red tail catfish, um, which is more like an ambush, come up behind and eat anything kind of predator. These catfish are really beautiful. It's just a, a bummer that they get like three or four feet long, you know. But I think they are a really beautiful one. The other one, while we're looking real quick, is the jaguar catfish. I think these guys are awesome. And I would love to have one someday. They do get up to, you know, 12 to 15 inches probably. Um, and in tanks, sometimes not quite as big. But I, they just have beautiful markings. I have a, a at my parents' house because I had to, I couldn't have cats in this apartment when I got married. So I left it with my parents. But I had, I had a uh, part ocelot, part... Uh, Asian uh, water cat, which is uh, what bangles were bred from. So if you've seen a bangle cat, I have like a wild uh, precursor to the line. And uh, mine, mine has this exact same color of that golden uh, kind of bronze, orange, copper color. Uh, fake name, what is up? Richard, hello. Uh, yeah, they shouldn't sell common plecos either. I totally agree, Ginger. Totally. Um, all right, let's see here. Uh, yeah, if you can, if you have a pool and you're just done with the pool or it's overgrown by algae and stuff, uh, definitely uh, turning it into a heated and well fil filtrated, if, as long as you do those things, uh, tank is a great idea. Um, in Florida, a lot of people were doing that that I met in the fish community. Um, let's see here. Let's go with uh, wood cats because I'm thinking about getting these. And uh, Aquatic Arts has talked about, he's, they said, hey, you talk to your, your viewers and ask them which wood cats they'd be interested in. And they really come through some really cool different colors and patterns. Uh, you know, there's honeycomb ones, there's spotted ones. I've had the honeycomb. These ones are really cool here. Um, so if you want to drop that in the, this is like a bark type colored one. Uh, if you want to do, hey, there's one of my videos, uh, my ninja wood cats right there. There are two of the Tatio Mosaica right here. I have, so this is one that's known as the Ninja Woodcat usually, but I have a variety, if you notice, no, not nearly as much white, no white spots on any of the ones I had, and then they actually had extra spines right there. 
So uh, there are several varieties that haven't been uh, quite sorted out yet. But wood cats are an interesting one. They hide a lot. They're kind of cute and pudgy usually. Um, I mean, just look at them. They have big eyes even when they're adults. Uh, and I just think they're a really underrated fish that the hobby doesn't see uh, enough of. They do uh, need to be fed live food sometimes if they're wild caught and uh, just certain uh, more difficult species. But for the most part, they can be raised in tanks. They can be bred in tanks. And just like any other, uh, they can do just fine in a tank. So see, this is, this is the one that you usually see. The kind I had were brought into the country, uh, interestingly, I will say. And uh, I, I paid too much for them. But, I mean, these fish run 40 to $60 uh, sometimes. Uh, you can get them at the wet spot or the cichlid exchange. But Aquatic Arts, like I said, asked me, how, what, which ones would you guys like? And so they are going to bring in more of them, uh, hopefully, soon. They brought in some a little while ago, and they sold out in one day. Uh, also, they have um, all, they had laser purple and orange and green laser Corridoras which are a newer discovery, um, orange laser corridors. Uh, these are beautiful. They sell for like 30 bucks a piece, though, at my local pet store. There's one actually from Aquarium Co-op. See, there's Hank, uh, the old puffer logo. Uh, but these are, I mean, they're just beautiful fish. And Aquatic Arts had the, the most uh, reasonable deal I've ever seen on them. So uh, definitely uh, to, to those who were asking, uh, check them out. Go to Aquatic Arts. They might have a sale going. They did for a while. And then if you use the code for our group, for our channel, not only will you get 15% off your first time, 10% every other time, but you will also get that money reinvested into prizes that we give away so yeah there's an orange laser reflection and a green one and there's also a purple one now uh, there's also a purple uh i have these guys downstairs by the way these are venezuela's uh hyphen uh ones and then also we've got these downstairs the trilineatus corridor oftentimes these are sold as julii they are not julii have just dots so let's let's show you guys uh, just so we can show you. I bet if I put Julii Corridora, we're going to get... Uh, yeah. So I type Julii Corridora, what do I get? Trilineatus right away. A true Julii Corridora does not have the maze pattern on its face. This, like, blocky maze pattern. They have the lines of dots, like this, on the side and then dots on their face but they do not have the maze like this on their side nor do they have the high fin as other versions do and also just to show you the sturby corridora because that's another very common and beautiful one that people confuse Uh, the Sturby has these bronze fins uh, that are really bright bronze. They're really beautiful. And you can see, uh, when you know what you're looking for, obviously, you're like, that's not, that's not the same fish at all. But you'd be surprised when you're at the pet store and you don't have one side-by-side -side to compare. It gets tricky on some of these. Uh, these are common things, so I'm just letting you know. Uh, but even really well-versed uh fish stores like aquarium co-op like uh like the wet spot they will call things julii because the hobbyists have been misnaming them for so long that now that's just the the default name that they go by uh and so it, it's 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 like saying can i instead of saying can i have a tissue uh it's you know can i have kleenex well kleenex is a brand name uh, it's, it's not actually 
uh, a thing. It's not any tissue. Uh, but yes. Uh, oh, Steph got Weitzman Corridor from Aquatic Arts, and they are gorgeous. Awesome. That's great to hear. So I'm going to do what I said. And uh, first of all, I'm out of Dr. Pepper. That is just a bummer. So let me fix that. Uh, I would love to get some of those Weissman, uh, what's Weitzman I, uh, from Aquatic Arts and attempt to breed them. You should do that. I would, uh, I would totally uh, support that, buddy. Uh, do I have one sip of this left? Even mm. shouldn't have taken it. Flat, warm, gross. Uh, hold on. Yeah. Oh no. no. Turn back around. Turn back around. There we go. All right. So the other th project that I have going, this is kind of neat. Look at the roots coming out all the way from the water line going down now into the eco-complete. But I have this plant now that is well over four feet in length growing out of this little bowl that doesn't get anything but water top-offs with, uh, unfortunately, with chlorine. There are still shrimp living in it. There are still plants clearly growing in it. And there's moss growing all over the outside immersed form of it, too. Uh, say hello to my little friend. This is Mr. Buttons. In our, our themed house. By the way... Uh, there's my wife and I right after we got married on our honeymoon. Look at my uh, our hippiness. There's our actual wedding. Driftwood Arch at the beach here. We're in just near Seattle. Um, so let's let's take a look for the first of our visitors. Now the other thing I'll, I will look at is how many freaking shrimp I have. Look at this. I got these from Aquatic Arts, these gold nebulae shrimp, and I don't I don't know what to do. There's just too many. Um, I'm going to say panda loaches, also very similar to a catfish, and I love them. I got these guys three times cheaper than any price I've ever seen anywhere uh, at Aquatic Arts. They randomly had adults, which I've also never seen. I've only seen the babies for sale. This, this is an adult back here. This guy's over a year old. Uh, and pandagars, they're not a catfish. They need oxygenated water. That's their main thing. And they like other pandagars. Either put them alone or put them with like five or six pandagars. They'll come up to your hand and they'll clean it and they'll feed. Uh, we've got over here, uh, we just missed him. He just du ducked away. Can we, can we catch him again? Uh, let's see here. Because I've got an L333. Oh, there he is. Can you guys make him out? So, hold on. Let me set my Dr. Pepper down after all that. But back in here, we have a Pleco hiding behind the heater. And if you look, that he he's more white or buttercream, but he will get darker. And that will turn to a yellow, hopefully. Uh, the other ones I've gotten from Aquatic Arts, I got for $43. They were $109 at my local pet stores when they came through. And these guys were only about an inch and a half long, but they're doing well in this little 17-gallon for now. And then I'll move them like I did. Uh, this is how I raised the other ones that are adults now. Also, look at all the shrimp. Like I said, in all these moss piles, there's just endless amounts of these gold nebula shrimp. They're a caradina, and they've bred like, I don't know, like they're crazy. They're just everywhere. <sighs> Same with my, the maluas that are in here. But oddly, uh, all my blue dreams, gone. Just overnight, just gone. Very weird. Blake's Aquatics, good evening. Uh, hello. Now... When setting up a tank for catfish, you can make them uh, another another Z. Hello, another the Z. Pugamus Maximus, hello. Good to see all of you guys in here. If you guys could take a moment to hit that like button, I would really appreciate that. I I would I'd hit that. Uh, 
All right, guys. So in here, like I said, we've got the uh, L333s. And he's hiding right behind this stick. And I pro we probably won't see him very well. But then we have the two leopard uh Leopard frog catfish also uh, plecos. Now all both of those types, the striped ones, the L three three threes. Aquatic Arts actually has albino ones right now, which I have never ever seen anywhere. I didn't know they existed. Here you can see the yellow better on the leopard frog. Okay, so I'm gonna move this really quick. He's probably gonna run, but there you go. There's my little happy leopard frog. That's Roger the frogger and uh they sell both young ones and sometimes older ones but they have a killer price so uh yeah check them out they're linked down below in the description as well as shirts and apparel uh that i've made uh, i know folks like ginger have picked them up and uh i think i need to rename the ranchu it's not a ranchu it's uh, a randa goldfish but whatever uh, you'll, you'll get the picture you'll see what it is uh soon this tank will be moving and uh all everything except you know the guppies uh or endlers these koi ones they've finally bred so i'm probably going to start distributing them locally soon i've got quite a few babies coming out now and these shrimp also these uh these near eye or these caradina uh parperipedentis shrimp and the malawa shrimp also uh i have two three hundred in these tanks now it's insane uh if we look at let's see if i can show you the difference real quick while we're while we're talking about it um and we'll look at that pleca one more time oh great so there that is a gold nebula shrimp. Caradina, you can see here. Come on. Uh, the stripes. Sorry, guys. I know this makes you guys uh, car sick, so to speak. Uh, but the stripes on that shrimp back there. Come on. You see all that? It's gold. And the rest of it's kind of a clear, clearish color. Kind of cool. Um, spots and things like that. Now, the L33... For a while, that was going for the same price as the Zebra Plecos, which were going for up to $400 an adult. Uh, it's crazy market. You can look them up. They're beautiful. But the L33s, which, which I have one of in here too, it looks very similar at this age to the uh, Leopard Frog, is uh, it's instead of having black uh, patterns on white, skin it's the inverse of that it's got uh white patterns on black background so right here while we see him we've got a male these are from aquatic arts i bred these hatched them from their parents and these are lemon plecos now these guys have uh white or blue like soft blue eyes but they're a nice little uh, ancestress pleco, and uh, like I said, there are plenty of types of catfish. This is one that I would truly recommend uh, to those of you who want to get into plecos. They're affordable. You can get like a calico or a natural brown one, uh, and you can get them. This is about the size they'll max out at. And this is not actually a true wild species, but rather this is a super red albino almost so it's kind of interesting um yes uh richard i am doing a, a new 90p tank uh very soon i just need to get the the lighting and the filter squared away uh, the stand is literally over by the old stand didn't get it done today wasn't feeling the hottest didn't sleep again last night been having a, a rough go of things health wise but this will revive me. I can feel it. You guys, the community, fish keeping, nature, it's what I need. So uh, it will revive me. Uh, believe in the process. And I'll be able to show you guys lots of really cool stuff as we set it up, as the new ecosystem comes together. 
you guys can kind of uh, help me on things and give me input. Uh, so, right here, this guy is the, or this gal, this is a female. See, there's no onodontodes. Those uh, sensing devices uh, on the, the nose, the whiskers, as you'd call it, she still has small ones, and she still has a uh, a um, lateral line that has uh, that you can see allows her to feel motion in the water. But the males do much more sparring and fighting naturally, and so they get these big onodontodes, which actually prove kind of like how strong they are in that nobody's come and nipped one off, and also just their age. It's kind of like an elk or something. Also, these guys will probably stay here. Um, I love these nearites. They're so pretty. Uh, there's some new nearites at Aquatic Arts also. I, I'm. Can you tell you guys that I'm just dying to order the new fish for the tank from Aquatic Arts? They're going to help me uh, fill up the, the tank. I think they're going to do like 50 50 split with me on filling up my the the livestock of the tank of what they have in stock and then ordering some stuff in so if you guys are um thinking of that uh, uh of also getting any of the fish that i mentioned there's another uh that's cracky i moved cracky if you remember he was the nearite that kept getting out of the tank and falling on the ground well now he's in this tank because it's a lot harder to climb out of and he's only done it a few times so once this tank is uh once the new tank is set up what will happen is i think we're going to keep this a crib breeding colony because they just do so well they're so happy there's eight adults total in here two that are stunted and the rest all spawn and are happy. And then I just take the babies and sell them off immediately as super young, you know, two for a dollar or whatever. Uh, but we'll be moving the uh, angel, the big old angel boy, and maybe the plecos just for the bio load so we can sustain these guys. And also I'll be stealing probably all the ember tetras and all the neon tetras, things like that. Uh, another cool thing that's going on all over the house is that the sword plants are reaching for the top. I think these are Prince Kleiner swords, but um, don't quote me on that. But it, they've put up one shoot that's just gone nuts uh, in tanks. Downstairs, one has crested the water twice. Kind of cool. And this sword is planted not up here i mean that's a, that's a log it's planted all the way it's coming up through all tangled up here and then it that's not it that's a a cough of uh, nubius i should say it's planted all the way back down in there so this thing is reaching all the way up to the top from the bottom kind of cool here's another little gal in here if I get them a cave, they'll spawn. Most uh, most plecos and sisters especially will spawn when you and corridoras too. This is the trick: is you just throw in. Well, first you let the water get warm, so you let it evaporate off a bit. Um, you let it evaporate down maybe 10, 20 percent. You let the heat go up about 10 degrees, maybe five degrees, and you want to be conscious of your other fish don't do that if it's going to kill your other fish do it to a lesser degree but then uh and that's all a slow process several weeks and then all of a sudden what you want to do is oh you guys are going to catch a mating dance from the cribs again there's the female on the left and here comes a male coloring up he's a pretty looker and remember, live streams are way duller than uh, real life. So you guys are catching. Uh, I wish you could see it in real life when all the cribs do this. It's so beautiful. And these are a uh, species of crib that only I have in that uh, they are a crib pulcher or a stripe beautiful crib. Pulcher means beautiful in Latin if you see it on other plants or animals. And uh, if you see them... Uh, they have stripes on them, usually two or three, and uh, on their body. 
And these guys ended up with one, and they've been mixed with Lacunja uh, cribs, which were a Tiniatus crib species, different uh, area, different uh, species. And I crossed them together, and these are all the babies of the old generation of those fish. So they have their own unique look, and their Tiniatus tend to be an inch, inch and a half smaller than the uh, other uh, poultry species of uh, uh, of uh, African uh, living in the African rivers uh, and in in uh, West Africa. Uh, they tend to be smaller, so they tend to be these little fat, round guys that Tiniatus do, and the poultry tend to be these bigger, elongated ones. And in the females, you can see both body styles. So both the poultry body style, this gal up top got the poultry style, whereas the one down here got the Tiniatus style. So she's she's got a belly still, but nothing like hers, the big pot belly swollen full of eggs. And they all have different stripe patterns on their face. Some have two, some have three, some have one. And one that passed away had none. So really odd. The males, uh, some of them have pink mouths uh, when they're in spawning mode. Others turn pink on their belly. It's just very strange. Okay, so that was a long enough detour about them. But while they do their thing, I always like to point it out because they're beautiful and as uh, Ginger said, she got two cribs. Uh, Do you know about aquatic arts, too? They had all sorts of epistos. I think in the new tank, which will be set up over there, I think we're going to do either German, like gold German rams, uh, electric blue and gold, maybe. Uh, or we're going to do epistos, some oddball, funky episto, maybe. Uh, just seeing if anybody came out of the of the dark for you guys over here. Um, no, it doesn't look like it. Well, all right. Uh, you can't get catfish out all the time. That's one drawback. All right. I feel like I missed a question. Whose question was it? Do, 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 do. What are small cold water catfish that won't tear up plants? Boy, that's a hard one. Um, I mean, you've got little, littler catfish, um, our Corydoras, obviously. Some of, like, uh, the Corydoras matei, and then the panda, the newer panda that has the high fin, those are found in, like, 68-degree water, so that, um, that may be good. I mean, that may be cold enough. But if you're talking like 50 degree water, then, uh, you know, like local, like North American water, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I just honestly, I haven't ever kept any catfish. Well, there aren't that many small catfish in North America. Our catfish are all mid to huge. Uh, the blue catfish, the channel catfish, the introduced Welsh catfish, and, you know, all sorts of bigger catfish that we have. Um, but uh you know there should be some sort of of uh maybe north american uh fish breeders association nanfa i think it's called uh i think you can f check them out and see if you need cold cold water but otherwise if we're talking like this i i would say uh the corridor of mateys and a lot of the colombian ones that live up into the the quicker water quick, clean, aerated, but colder water that aren't living right in the heart of the Amazon in the mucky water, uh, they can probably deal with it the best. Some of these pandagaras and things like that can can do pretty good. Um, the panda loaches can go all the way to 65 degrees, um, but those aren't exactly what you asked for. So uh, I apologize if that doesn't help. Hopefully it does a little. But yeah, so let's... Go downstairs. Again, thank you guys so much for doing the super chats. It means a lot. It's very sweet of you. And for doing, uh, for, you know, liking, subscribing. Of course, the, the catfish all hit the deck as soon as I come down here. Um, uh, liking, subscribing, doing all that. Speaking of catfish tearing things up. So I just moved the majority of my, uh, panda corridoras into this tank here. Can you see them? Are they... Is anybody home? 
all right, we're gonna get we're gonna get bossy and get dun 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 the dreaded turkey baster out. There's one up there. That's a weird place for him, but maybe he's grazing on the algae. His fins look like he got beat up by somebody. Maybe he's a jerk. So the other thing to remember is that all Corydoras are venomous. So that's the different than poisonous. That's venomous. So they have little spikes either here or here or by their anal fin or some combination, but usually right by their armpit. And this little clear thing here by their gill and by their uh, their ear, uh, oh, what is it called? It has a name. Um, it has a name. Uh, they, they take them out and they're like a stone inside a fish and it tells you like how far they've traveled in their life and how old they are. It has rings on it. Uh, osteolith, maybe? Litha something lith I whatever sorry I can't remember of it but uh yeah so they're in here they're doing their thing they're active these guys this tank is 70 degrees so uh they are doing just fine in the colder water as are the uh Malawa shrimp and the the uh the uh I don't know why but the indestructible other fish or other shrimp of the uh, gold nebulas they're also in here now they're not breeding down here as fast but they are uh existing which is a, an accomplishment so i love me these corridoras uh over here we have an adolphus corridora come on and we have uh salt and pepper aka here he comes uh aka corridora hebrosis these guys are great in that they will school with other uh fish like tetras uh over here we have a green dragon pleco um where you know why can't i get my hebrosis out when i need him you guys are failing me no food for you tonight everybody um all right let's try to move this around yeah Cory's and all these fish in general all these catfish have a way of just digging around and uprooting plants. If you give them sand or, or coarse, very small uh, pebbles mixed with some coarse or sand or fluoride or whatever, um, that will allow them to play in it more, dig around in it. They like to do that. Sometimes I, when they're nervous, they actually really like to hide in there. But here we have a salt and pepper, a.k.a. Corridor Hebrosis. These guys will hang out. This is as big as they get, full grown. And here's my finger to show you their size. They're a great nano catfish. They can withstand a little cooler temperatures. Here's a green dragon uh, that has the long fin gene and the actual green color gene. Uh, it looks like, uh, <clears throat> let's see. Do, 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 do. Grace Pet Life. Hello. Uh, all right. Dun, 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 dun. Who can we sneak up on next? Uh, actually, we'll sneak up on these guys. So over here, we have uh, more fish that I'm trying to catch. So over here, we have a very beautiful set. They just had babies, and they're, they're really flighty. Uh, but these are albino, a.k.a. lemon. Some people call them. They do have the blue eyes. But they're the fancy long fin uh, ancestress. And they're a cross between two different ancestress uh, species in the wild that were brought into captivity. And so they're a little different. Um, you know, here we have another green dragon offspring. I'll show you their father soon. Uh, and then we've got more pandagaras hanging out down here. In this tank, there's like eight of them, and they'll pig pile up with each other. We also have the uh, orange uh, Corydora uh, Venezuela. But let's see if I can puff some water towards them and startle them out of here and show you guys their sw beautiful swimming. Uh, let's see if we can get this guy to come out. Come on. Come on. 
Boy, he really does. Okay, there we go. They move like angels, like beautiful angels when you watch. So they don't need a huge tank, but I would give them one. This is a 40, but I'd give them one. These guys are over a year old now. They just haven't gotten super big. I haven't given them a ton of protein. They've been eating a lot of algae and just stuff that falls from other uh, fish, uh, other fish food. So, yeah, uh, here's the new tank again, by the way. So you can kind of see by size, side by side size, uh, what it's going to be like. I think I have lined up a twin star light. I was debating between doing two of these fluvols or a twin star, uh, and this is what happens. Uh, when you give me choices. All right, so over here we have uh, more. These are all long fin green Corydoras, two different batches. This is going to be a female. Females are teardrop shaped, whereas the males are more of a uh, wide all the way down shape. And the, the females are stubbier, whereas the males are a little bit more elongated. So here... We have a uh, we have a female, uh, and this is true for most ancestors. We have a female, so she's got the belly, and it's a spiral intestines, which is kind of cool. And the mouth, you can see they actually have little teeth scrapers that are for rasping off diatomaceous algae, things on rocks, and so forth. And then the male right here, he has much more of a. a lengthened rather than a little circle belly he's got a lengthened triangular shaped intestine and belly plus once they reach a certain age they get these even though even if they don't have big onodontodes like i'll show you on this other one they'll get some and the females may get a couple but nothing like the males um so yeah but these are probably the longest tailed uh fancy plecos that are out there right now i got these from select aquatics greg sage these these particular ones and uh i love them their tails so long you don't want anybody uh, abusive in with them uh because i mean just they're just so uh delicate uh their tails if they were to get chewed on. and then in the green dragon category over here uh you we have a darker green dragon and then we have a actual like khaki green color. Uh, ideally, there is a lime, like a lime green and uh, kind of a, a pucy green color that the that the lion was being I, uh, ideally bred for. Um, let's see here if we can get some flushed out into the open. Do 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 do. Here comes another one. Another one swims around us. And another one swims. And another one swims. All right. So these guys, they've got that long, flowy tail again like we were looking for. And they've got these beautiful cream-colored uh, tips on their tail. Hey, stay still. This is a live stream. But they don't have the green color uh, in quite as an abundance as some of the other uh offspring of these catfish now when they have the darker bodies with this cream tail look at look at it's like a shark tail too it's got that cool crescent end uh that actually um that's it, it usually means their eyes are going to be purple which is kind of interesting now down here this is a green one. Oh, he just went around the freaking corner of course he did let's see if we can kind of scare him back around There we go. So that's a green one right there. Tail, though, way less fancy. Uh, you can see it's still got a bigger tail than a non-fancy long fin one. But he has normal dark eyes, dark colored eyes. Um, whereas these longer fin ones, they have bright purple eyes, which is cool. Oh, there's the greener colored one, even though that's hard to tell in this lighting right now. Uh, but trust me, this is more of a khaki green and almost like a dark gr grayish green. You guys, if you saw my recent video about duckweed, you saw that I cleared all of it out, uh, and it's all back. And I also want to get more half beaks. 
So uh, I saw that Aquatic Arts had them, and then I saw that they sold out instantly. Like, I wrote them a letter saying, hey, I'd love to pick some up sh and put them on the show. Like, how many can I buy? Uh, you know, I'm just curious, didn't want to buy you guys out or whatever. And before the day even came around, before Monday even came around, they were gone. So I hope someone, some one of y'all got them. So here's some younger uh, Green Dragons. Uh, pardon the dirty glass, but they like eating that. So I allow the algae to grow, allow the light to grow. The nitrates are a little higher in this tank. This is a great combo, honestly. Uh, you can even have shrimp in with these guys. So now that's not to say that the shrimp won't get eaten. Uh, the shrimp do get eaten. But you can keep a certain number of shrimp, Neocaridina generally, or Malawa, or, you know, tiger shrimp, something hardy, uh, in with the full-grown Plecos. So over here, we have the Papa of all those other ones. And uh, let's see here. Let's try to keep him on the glass, maybe. Maybe. Uh, let's see. So you can see the onodontodes, they branch off actually. Uh, I don't know if you guys will be able to see that, but you can also see that they've got the rasping mouth, uh, up above. They've got like almost a tooth structure that allows them to scrape down off rocks. And then they're going to have a cat's eye that's gold and purple on the male side of this line. And I think that's a mutation that is fairly uncommon in that I haven't talked to anybody else who has that exact uh, mutation in their in their uh, dragons. Uh, speaking of earlier, the Tinianus, Corridor Tinianus, here we go, right here. This guy's one. He's got some scuffs on his fins. I'm going to keep an eye on that. That's not for sure anything bad. Um, but it could turn into a bacterial infection or some sort of slime coat issue. Uh, but my guess is he just bashed himself on some of these rocks. But yeah, so here I've successfully been breeding uh, with one little clay pot or a ledge. Sometimes the, uh, the, the uh, plecos prefer the ledge. Uh, I've been breeding blue dream shrimp. You can see them back in there. I've been breeding uh, Lucas Brett's uh, Rainbow Endlers. I've given up on the spade tail. I got there, and I was like, cool, now what? And so now I'm trying to get these longer, flouncy versions of the spade-shaped tail uh, going. And then we also have, obviously, the plecos. And there's one oddball uh, orange creamsicle pleco in here, which is a mix of two uh ancest or an ancestress and a non-ancestress uh wild pleco now you're trying to get in the net what is your deal dudes see those purple eyes did you guys catch that for a second uh but look at those long fins as you can see this this one's a good three or four years old uh this male here that i have i've had him a while uh and he is uh just a really good looking fish he's been really healthy and He's got babies with him that are both the darker kind right here with the purple eye. Can you see the purple eye? Kind of. And then right here with the, the green and black eye, uh, more just normal black eye ones with the gray color uh, and the blue dream shrimp. So I'm able, and then also with the <laughs> Corydori trilineatus, I'm able to uh, breed all of those. So we've got two kinds of catfish breeding in here. And then we've also got the um, the plecos, and then the endlers, and, and you know the new Caradina shrimp. Down here, while we're here, let's say hello to our honorable mention, the beautiful panda loach. Again, I've got some upstairs, but here's the downstairs ones, and here's my uh, high grade blue dream shrimp from Lucas Bretts. I also have Blue Dream Shrimp from Aquatic Arts, but they're up in that tank that I just showed you. <laughs> All right. So let's see here. Duckweed, yes, so annoying, right? Um, uh, don't, let's see here. 
Don't endlers mess with the shrimp? Yes, endlers, any fish really can mess with the shrimp. Um, those shrimp up there have this going on. So they either have a dark spot on a light body or a light spot on a dark body. Like I'll be fishing that one out of there. Uh, and yes, they will eat the babies for sure. They're not going to eat the adults pretty much at all. Like I haven't had that problem whatsoever. But they will definitely eat the juveniles. So what is important is to have lots of rocks, variable sizes. Same with these panda loaches. They don't even eat the baby shrimp. Not at all. As long as I give them their algae flakes, they don't care. They I watch the babies climb on their face. Um, but I also have back in here again, Battis breed again there's two females and a male i don't know where they are right now i was hoping maybe they'd make an appearance uh but yeah the the breeding isn't very heavy in this tank for the shrimp but up in this naughty mess of things and then in the cracks and crevices of this dragon stone or oko or whatever you want to get any stone with texture uh you can also just take pebbles like i do here and just put different pebbles and then bigger and bigger stones against ledges and sticks. And the shrimp know to hide in there. They, they really do. Lastly, we've got all this val I took out of the other tank. And we've got some... Uh, something is killing my poor, poor shrimp in this tank. Don't know what it is. It's really bumming me out because it took me two years to get these babaltis going. And we've also got the yellow yellow line Sakuras in here too. And nobody's doing well. And, you know, I say not to do anything too sudden with shrimp. I'm worried that when I brought my shrimp back in from outside, uh, that stupidly I didn't quarantine them. Didn't think it would be a huge issue. And uh, apparently these yellow guys that I took outside... Um, I think they brought something back in because the adults are just slowly dying, which is a real bummer. Um, there were about 100 in here, and now there's maybe 30 or 40 um, just kind of hiding amongst the debris. Um, so, yeah, that's what's going on. Uh, catfish. I'm looking at getting maybe like, so like I said, some wood cats, some koi's. Might get like a banjo or a red lizard, uh, a red tail lizard catfish, something like that. Let's take one last check and see if anybody came out to say hello. Also, the uh, Shino's algae shrimp. I know they're on clearance right now at Aquatic Arts, so you can get 15% off of them, plus their clearance price. I paid like $12 for these when they were new, and the only people in the U.S. Man, I'm foaming at the mouth the only people in the u.s who had them uh so go get a deal <laughs> so all right guys well reaching that hour mark and that's when i have to say closing time you don't have to go home and you don't live here this is the internet um yeah i love my danios i love southeast asian nano fish don't you, Sergio? Sergio, have you been a good boy today? He killed all his uh, tank mates that were angelfish, so we'll see how the new tank suits his needs. We'll have to be very careful with that. But Sergio has been doing a new trick. Where'd he go? Sergio, where are you at? Sergio, dog. Oh. Come back, Sergio. I'm feeding you. All right, so I guess he's camera shy. Anyways, what he's been doing is he's been taking uh, the floating uh, food that's up here and he'll chomp on it with air and slap his the roof of his mouth on it which means he has to get his body pretty high out. So sometimes it scares me because I'll see his his fin up here. It's not like his angel fin stands up, his uh, dorsal. But he'll come up 
and he'll actually hit this. He'll hit the lighting stuff, and it'll shake if he hits it, if he smacks it hard enough. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, but it looks like uh, our time is... Why am I... I must be dehydrated, or I just need more of the doctor. Smooth, like Dr. Pepper. <sighs> All right, guys. Again, thank you to the Super Chatters, to you guys who are out there and uh, watching the channel, sharing the videos. Uh, to those of you on Patreon, you guys make it happen. We're almost at the two-year mark, which is really cool. I mean, we are pretty much there, but um, November 4th. Hey, somebody's out. Check this out. Where'd he go? I just saw him. The leopard. Oh, there we go. Eh, eh, eh. Focus. Rendering. There's the leopard frog adult. So there's one of them. They've got a nice bright yellow color to them. Usually they color up more too. And then instead of those dead eyes that the, like I said, the L33s have, they've got a cat's eye. And as they get older, they just get pudgier. And so this is probably a male here with that elongated body and kind of a flattened back. But they also will have texture right by their gills that looks like warts or little spikes, little spines. And those are more sensory organs for seeing in the dark and for sparring with adversaries. Look how pink this guy is for a male. For a male crib, I've never seen that. So this this uh, hybridization that I accidentally came up with not knowing that there was still a poultry in this tank uh, over two years ago when I put the Lacunja uh, Upper Falls cribs in here. Uh, has actually made a really awesome group of cribs that have been able to very peacefully um, hang out even while spawning. It's really odd. Um, but that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Uh, if you guys want to see more of what is going on, here's another. Um, the, the catfish, by the way, they do uh, have the ability to slightly turn color, get darker, lighter. Uh, usually it's a health thing if they turn washed out, but right here is a good example of where he's turned the color of that rock that he hangs out on. And that's a longer term process, but uh, they they do have some control over that. So uh, depends on the species, but ancestors seem to be able to lighten up and darken just like they do when spawning and stuff. Um, but yeah, this guy's getting bigger and... Uh, <laughs> Or gal, I should say. I think that's going to be a female. This one is the same age as the one downstairs. It's just very stunted. Sometimes you'll never know. Uh, sometimes they hide as sneaker female sneaker males. They're male fish that look like females for indefinitely, and then all of a sudden they'll pop out. And uh, when the other fish are spawning, they'll jump in and be like, "Yo, I got, I got next." or actually chase off other fish uh, in a distracting way, like the males go after the fake males. This happens with catfish, too. Uh, and then they'll uh, have their other uh, buddy who looks like a female, or they'll loop back around, and they'll actually uh, they'll be ready to go to fertilize with their row uh, the eggs that have been released already. Uh, so... I think we've seen some really cool stuff tonight. Thanks for hanging tight, guys, and for uh, chatting just a little bit about about the catfish. Uh, if you're more of a dogfish person, uh, I'm sorry, but that's how things go. So uh, let me know what you think you want to see in the new 40. It's 18 inches tall, 18 inches deep. Going to put lots of hides in it. I'm going to do a PVC pipe network, I believe, uh, in it again like I did in the one downstairs. Uh, and I'd like to have a corridor, maybe orange lasers. It's pretty expensive. We'll have to see what Aquatic Art says. Or I might need to acquire some more Patreons. So if you like all my fish, you like their schools, help pay for their college and check that out. But if you're like me and you don't have money to go throwing to every YouTuber, 
uh, just sharing, liking, telling your friends about it, um, and continuing to watch and say hello and ask questions, that is super helpful. And so thank you to all of you. Have a wonderful evening. Take care of your critters, your plants, your fish, your tanks, the people around you, and of course yourself, so you can continue to take care of those other things. And in the end, if even half of us do that, everyone will be taken care of and loved by many people. So uh, have a good night. Have a good week. I'll talk to you soon. Ciao.